this meet. Okay, hello everybody and welcome. So this is sort of a quick special episode that's not directly related to um, a particular episode of a program, but actually is related to um, a subject of a program. And it's, so it's, as you can see the title, it's How the Woke Broke TNG. So um, if you come down on a political uh, side that uh, is uh, pro-woke, then you probably won't like this video, and that's fine. Uh, you're absolutely entitled to whatever your opinion is. Um, I just disagree with it, and I think a number of people disagree with what's happening to television today. Um, and I'll talk about how this has been happening with TNG and what they've done to TNG as a result of it. Um, so specifically within Picard, uh, they really damaged a lot of the history of some of these characters. Um, they made the uh, the male characters uh, weaker and a little more erratic, and they made the females, you know, less erratic, um, and 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 for some reason gave them more of the leading position as though they were going to do a better job. Uh, that doesn't mean that women and are cannot be strong leaders by any stretch of the imagination. Of course they can. That would be absurd to believe that they cannot. Um, but. To have to degrade other characters or other genders in order to bring up another is actually insulting to that gender. So in other words, you have to make the male characters weak, otherwise the women don't look strong. So women can be strong without that. They can coexist as strong characters. You don't have to make Picard look weaker. Um, you don't have to make, uh, you know, you don't have to put women in positions of power if they haven't earned it. So for example, um, Beverly Crusher uh, in All Good Things back when uh, TNG ended back in uh, 94, she was actually in the futuristic version. She was the captain of the Pestor. Right. Well, in this one, at the end of the Picard series, they made Seven the captain of the new Enterprise, but her history and her experience, her elements of risk, all the things that she had done didn't qualify her to be um, the the leader of the Enterprise. I, I don't think anybody can say, well, she equals out to the level of what characters like Picard were, or like the experiences of people like Crusher. So their experience justified them being the captains of ships like that. I don't believe they did that with the character of Seven, and I think it's obvious. Then they have the character of Raffi as, as second in command. So it's like they bypassed all these other people and pushed in characters that did not fit in the command structure for that place in time. Like, could Seven of Nine ultimately been a good captain? Sure. But was she ready for that? No. I mean, just alone, she took too many risks. She didn't obey uh, the, the prime directive. She didn't obey the orders of what uh, the, uh, the Starfleet had set and the Federation had set as their standards and understanding that there has to be a chain of command and that you have to respect certain rules. That was the whole concept of the Federation is we have a certain set of rules and we respect other cultures and the whole thing. But she didn't necessarily respect that, nor did she uh, abide by her captain's commands at times. So if you're going to constantly you know, disobey your commander, I don't think that your leader, your captain, whomever, I don't think that qualifies you to be the captain because you, you know, intentionally went out of your way to disagree and oppose the captain. Also, they're going with characters that are more risk takers. So they don't really belong in the command structure of things like Starfleet. So why would you, they, 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 they lean more towards chaos uh, and disagreement than they do towards uh, sort of organized, you know, um, uh, spheres of leadership. So Rafi definitely didn't fall into that character. Was she a good character? Yes. Was she an interesting character? Yes. But did she fall into the category of being a good second in command for the flagship of Starfleet? I, I, I don't think that made any sense. And I'm going to go even more over. So I don't think that um, I don't think that Jack belonged as a special advisor to the captain. Now, whether that was tongue in cheek or whether it was sincerely 
a concept that he was just going to sit there and observe instead of learning more about being a you know a uh a, an active member of the crew he was going to sit there it was almost like a demonstration of saying white privilege so jack is getting his position because of white privilege and he's just going to sit here and he's going to get to give you know advice to the captain based on his white privilege so it was almost like it, it, so he because of the um the old white guy picard was there that now of course you know jack gets to be there as well well i don't think jack should have gotten in that position i i don't think that any character should be put in a role just because they wrote it that way to say, well, look, women can do something and they can be better leaders than men. And now there's two women in charge of the star of the, of uh, the enterprise, the flagship. How about that? Oh, shouldn't they be qualified to do it? Why, why, why shouldn't it be someone who's more qualified to do it? I mean, where is uh, Bolana Torres? She was, a, she could have been a good captain at this point. We have no idea where Bolana Torres is. Um, where are other characters that we had from other other shows uh why is it um you know why isn't uh why aren't characters that have been brought up under before whatever happened to um what was it suzanne oh gosh she was in the episode with laforge where laforge was uh you know uh laforge and she almost turned into these sort of translucent beings i don't remember the names of them off the top of my head we'll get into that but she had been in starfleet for a while why is it she being the captain why do they have to put it to where because these guys were fighting with picard and actually completely ignoring the rules and the and the and the tiers of authority and uh, the rules of the Federation, why would you put them in, in command positions when they've already said, well, if I don't like the way you do it, I'm going to do it myself. I mean, Picard stepped outside of it from time to time, but he at least respected the command structure. These guys don't respect the command structure in the same way. Why would you put them in positions of leadership, especially on the flagship of the of the Federation flagship? It just doesn't make any sense. So this is the problem. They're trying to, you know, the, eliminate old white people, if you want to call it that, uh, and 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 or the older class of people, and put in younger people or people who, you know, or, you know, women who, more in positions of power without earning them. I mean, why, why, why wouldn't Tuvok, with his experience and his level of experience, why wouldn't you put him in charge of the Starship Enterprise? He had more experience than um, than uh, than seven of nine. It would have made more sense, in, in at the end of TN uh, of the end of Star Trek Picard, if they had because you know all the ships had gotten damaged and all they were, they were rebuilding the fleet and they rechristened the Titan um, the uh, the the Enterprise uh, G NCC one hundred seven G. It would have made more sense, even though. Uh, Seven had the experience as the first officer on it. If you were going to now make this the flagship of the Enterprise, it would have made more sense for Tuvok to come over and be the captain of the Enterprise, and then her be his second in command, and then she continues to learn to sub from someone who you know understands the rules of authority, has a really solid concept of the hierarchy and the structure to make sure that they don't just go off half kilter. I mean, Tuvok would have been a perfect character for something like that. Why wouldn't you put him in charge? And yes, he could groom her then more. But it's like Seven has never really completely changed from doing things her own, you know, her own way. Even she still does things slightly Borg a little bit, but more than not, she just she she moved away from this command structure sort of uh, behavior to just kind of doing things the way she thinks they need to be done. But I don't think that it puts her in the position. I think that's where the woke is kind of destroying these shows. That's why these shows are not getting great ratings. And here's the other thing. At the end of this show, this series, the the Picard series, what they what did they do? They had, um, they had, um, uh, they had them do the exact same ending, the exact same ending as All Good Things. The seven of them are now sitting around as old. It's almost like they're in a retirement home, but they're like, 
passing out the cards and doing the whole card things with data and everybody. It's almost like they're eliminating the history of Nemesis and where data got killed off and some of the other films that were lackluster and did not get good responses. So all these characters exist together now and they're just playing cards the same way they did it before. But but they didn't need to do that. That was what Star Trek The Next Generation All Good Things was all about, was saying that the future could be whatever they wanted it to be, and they were together. But now it's like you know, what the future is, you know, we've got 20 years and we're dead, so let, this is our retirement home thing, and we're all playing cards in a retirement home, and what the hell is your name? It just, it, it ruined it. And then, of all things, to, to, to go and play where as much as they want to pitch the the wokeness of it what they did it what did they do at the end at the end of the series at the very end of the series they bring q back who they had written him off fine in the end of season two they kind of gave a a good storyline for him and wrote off that character but they had to bring him back again and of course it's like you humans see things so literally linearly but they bring him back and he's talking to jack and saying well the you know picard you know has completed his um you know, the trial of humanity, but yours is just beginning. Jack is not in charge of the ship. He has no, that's basically almost saying that he doesn't have to listen to seven of nine. Was it because she's older? Is it because she's a woman? Because he doesn't have the authority to make seven of nine go and do things. He is the special baby advisor to to the captain he is not going to be able to make decisions on that deck ahead of seven or of a uh, raffi so what, what what is the logical reason for a q to come and see him it would have been more logical for q to go and see seven and say you know i thought you were dead q and he goes Oh, I thought you were, you know, brighter than these humans, but you only think linearly as well. And then saying, you know, but, you know, I thought, you know, I've heard about this trial against humanity, but I thought Picard had already proven you. And he says, he goes, well, Picard's trial's over, but yours has just begun. It would have made more sense to, 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 for him to appear to her, not to appear to Jack. What, 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 it's, it's like they, the, the woke element of storytelling contradicts itself and damages this structure of people who are deserving of positions to have the positions. And then when they put people in those positions to have those positions, then they kind of undermine them and say, oh, well, yeah, you, but I got to go to Picard's son because, I mean, it's Picard, so he's more special than you are. He's going to be the main one who makes that decision. That's just, it's just, it ruins everything about what made TNG great. We didn't need Jack. Uh, we didn't need any of that stuff. It, the, the whole Picard thing is to me, I'm going to watch every episode and do a review of the episodes because it wasn't, I'm not saying all the episodes were bad, but what it led to ultimately did not m build anything upon the Star Trek Next Generation world. It didn't build anything upon it. Um, you know, it, the, at the end, they annihilate an entire race. They annihilate the Borg. The, they completely eliminate the Borg, which is basically saying you can never learn to coexist with the Borg, which means, okay, so then you're into essentially uh, genocide because you just essentially contributed to the complete elimination of a race of people. So isn't that, isn't that what Hitler did? I mean, where is this coming from? What what they're doing with this program? It's it's just insane. Woke storytelling bends so far, they go around the other way. They don't go one eighty. They bend so far. There's one one eighty. They kind of bend and loop back up to the place where they were before, but with a distorted perspective of it. And that's what sort of is happening with. What, what happened with Picard. So, yeah, that's my opinion on the how the woke broke TNG. Like I said, if you have never watched an episode of Picard, uh, don't. TNG's all good things, they basically just robbed their ending 
Because at the end of TNG, all good things, which we'll talk about that episode at some point too, um, you know, uh, Q even says to Picard, don't you get it? The trial never ends. So that was never going to be completely over anyway. The whole idea was even if Q even says, I'll stop by from time to time. But it was almost like they felt like they had to pass it. But Q is not in the same place he was. The actor's not the same age. So the timelessness of that character has been damaged. Instead of leaving him timeless in that place that they were, they should have just left him alone. He was fine. You just you didn't need to bring Q back. You knew he was there and he was watching and that he was going to challenge them to make sure that they were continuing to evolve. And in this one, it's as though they it became very emotional, and they they had to create a story that didn't need it, that didn't need to be created, because Picard had already at the end of it, what Picard finally found was family. That was what really he was missing was family. He was never really super caught up on the child aspect of things, as much as he was the family. But of course, they had to make it that he was now, oh, I'm a father, and you're more important than anything in the world. Well, you know, he had already found what he needed with the TNG, uh, the rest of the cast on TNG with uh, with Little Forge and with uh, Data. I kind of already mentioned that in one of my, um, I think it was my prediction or, uh, or may have been the live reaction to the Picard series finale. But bottom line is... Uh, the woke broke TNG. They broke it. And if you haven't seen any of Star Trek Picard, if you want to watch it, uh, then you know watch it. But I, I don't encourage it. It's just like the end of Entourage. The series ended fine. The movie ruined what they had created with the series at the ending. The the nature of Hollywood and storytelling nowadays within the mainstream media is to rehash all the things that were successful because they can't create original stories now or original interpretations of themes that attract audiences. So they have to go and dig in the, in, into, the, into the annals of history and find the things that were successful and try and, you know, basically suck all the, the nectar and the bone marrow out of it to try and make an extra, you know, an extra dime here and there when it was fine. Who really needed to see more of what happened with Picard and all those after TNG? How many people really needed to see, you know, all the other adventures they'd gone on? We had seen 200 and something episodes. Wasn't it 200 and something episodes of, of Star Trek Next Generation? We had seen the adventures. What we knew was they were going to go on more adventures. Um, you know, whatever their futures turned out to be was fine, but we knew they were going to go on more adventures together. We knew that they were a reliable crew and that they would probably make it through. This just pushed it further, but to a point of, I don't know, nausea for me. So uh, that's my opinion on this one. Take care if you like this video uh, or you don't like this video. Thumbs it up, thumbs it down. Leave your comments below. Tell me what you think. Do you think the woke broke TNG? Uh, I, I strongly believe that. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Continue to be awesome.